and welcome back to season four of the Canary Room. A um, couple of new things for, for season four. So a new feature is going to be called the to-do list. And so every, at uh, the beginning, um, uh, the first episode of each month, we'll do a to-do list. And what that means is that question time will become a monthly element of the show as well. So the first episode of each month, we'll have the to-do list. Question time will be part of the second episode of each month. So I will call out for questions on Facebook uh, for then. We've got a, a new section, the Norwich Notebook. Uh, so we've got a, a stud of exhibition Norwich in. Uh, I'm sure they'll replace the, uh, the, the red poles for heartache. Uh, so we've got those in this year. Uh, something to look forward to there. We'll also uh, feature our coloured canaries. So the colour canary corner, I think we're going to call that feature. Um, we'll obviously, we've got the fives, we'll, we'll go around the room with the fives on a regular basis. The Red Pole Diaries has become the native diaries. We've got a number of native finches in, including Red Poles, so it feels appropriate to update that as well. Our top tips, uh, and this is really feedback from, from a number of you, uh, via Facebook and YouTube. Our top tips I'm going to um, talk about in the show, but I'm also going to make them standalone mini videos as well. Uh, so people have, have contacted me and asked me where they can see certain things. So I'm going to make them standalone videos. There's already some on the channel. Um, lots of highs and lows. As the season goes through, I'm sure it's absolutely Baltic in the Canary Room. You'll notice there's no check shirt today, but have no fear. The check shirts will be back. As always, grab yourself a cuppa. Thanks, Derek, for the mug. Sit back and enjoy season four, episode one. It is a, uh, a bitterly cold morning here um, in the Canary Room as we film today. Um, I've got uh, I've got four layers on. Um, you can see some footage I took outside. There's a, there's a hard frost, um, and actually I thought at one stage the fence was on fire, um, but it was as the morning sun came and uh, and and sort of started to melt away um, the ice. It was the steam coming off there. Um, I've done my final selection uh, of the birds for this year. So I've done my final selection of the fifes, uh, done my final selection of um, the coloured canaries, the, the red poles. And of course, unfortunately, the winter will, um, will, will change some of that. So um, really focused over the next sort of six weeks or so of, of just getting the birds through. Anything with an underlying health condition, um, the weather is likely to take its toll on which is you know it's one of the downsides of, of keeping livestock um, and it's just something that we have to uh, you know it's never nice but we have to um, we have to move on from we have to plan from so um, first feature you'll notice from last time we, we've moved the um, the canary hens so we've moved the five canary hens in fact we've moved all of the birds um, into what will be their breeding cages now uh, thanks everyone for getting in touch uh, and all your lovely comments around the new cages in the canary room I'm absolutely delighted with them um, so much so that I've um, I've ordered some more um, uh, and you might think well, <laughs> where are you going to put them and um, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm, I'm going to replace I think the wire cages and the wire cages will move into the garage as an overspill uh, as, as stock so that will give me a bit more flexibility um, in here it'll give me an extra couple of cages as well um, so looking forward to, they'll, they'll land I think the end of January Dave said so um, done the selection with the fifes um, We've got a, a number of different uh, lines running and, and the beauty with the Fice this year is that they're all, um, th there's a connection, there's a thread throughout them. So over the next couple of weeks, next couple of episodes, we'll, we'll introduce, we'll look at the various different birds, we'll look at what birds are kept and why. Uh, and why I'm putting certain birds together as pairings. So we'll look at that and we'll follow, as we did in season three, we'll follow their evolution. So first up today, we're gonna look at the cinnamon line. Um, now you'll remember the cinnamon line 
was a line that we really sort of started this time last year with a visual cinnamon cock and four hens. So let's take a look now at the plans this year for the cinnamon line. One of the things that I, uh, I wanted to do with the cinnamon line was um, utilize carrier cocks. Um, for me, the, the carrier birds have um, often have a better type. And so for those of you who aren't familiar with the terminology, a carrier bird or split bird is a bird which visually looks normal, but actually carries uh, a cinnamon gene. Um, it can only be a cock bird, so you can't have hen carriers, um, but you can have cock carriers. What you'll notice here is that we've got a, a cinnamon carrying yellow cock bird with two buff hens. So we've got a variegated buff hen and we've got a fawn buff hen. Now, um, at the moment that cock bird is in with those two hens so I'm going to run them as a trio and I've just put them in together now they battered each other as I first put them in and um, absolutely battered each other um, but they're, they've, they've settled down now and, and I say that you know it, it was part of the sort of getting to know period and um, cocks are singing but not lustfully yet I will uh, early February, I'll take them out of here. I'll leave the hens in a double breeder to get a bit of room. And then I'll single the cocks off here. The remaining five cocks are singled off. So in this cage here, we've got a, a heavily variegated yellow cock split for cinnamon. We've got a variegated cinnamon buff hen. And we've got a fawn hen that we bought in from Gerald, uh, Gerald Spencer last year. Our other cinnamon line is... Um, a uh, another carrier cock it's a it's a buff cock this time so it's a a, a variegated cinnamon uh, carrying buff cock and we've got a variegated cinnamon yellow hen and we've also got a white hen in here so what i've done um with the white birds you remember last year we had a, a the sort of the, the the development of a white line as well um, and what i've done with that is I'm thinking. I'm thinking long term, so I'm thinking about you know the room in the canary room. I'm thinking about uh, how many cinnamon birds that are, that I want to have. Um, there is now a, a separate classification for fawns, so these pairings will breed me um, visual cinnamon birds, hopefully visual fawn birds as well, um, and because. Um, because of the way that they're that they are I'm, I'm very much looking forward to seeing what they do now i have retained one allied white bird to go with um both uh, the dark line so i'm going to try and breed some blues and just keep them in the dark line as well so that's our cinnamon line for this year and that's our plans for this year um you know, last year I talked about the, the sort of the formation, the foundation of the cinnamon line and really thinking about, about it being a three year plan before, you know, we were challenging for the colour special on the bench. So last year, really year one. Um, this year is year two. Um, I got a question on on on, uh, on YouTube. You know, how do I think my cinnamons would have fared? Well, I think they'd have done okay. I might have I might have uh, I've got a class win from them. I think the birds that I've got now um, are better than the birds I had last year. That's important. You want to see progress. And so, what we've got here now is four hens and two cock birds. We will keep in touch with them throughout the year to see how they get on. Coming up now, it's the first of our new features on the show. It's the to-do list. So when I was planning the new series, one of the things I was looking at was, you know, what new features can I bring in? And uh, and the to-do list kind of sort of sprung to mind. So we are sort of six to eight weeks uh, before the, the start of the breeding season here um, in the UK. Um, and so my to-do list for January um, has, uh, has a number of things on it. So the first thing, and it might sound, um, <laughs> It might sound a bit forward, um, is to order your rings. Um, if you haven't already ordered your rings, 
uh, order them now. Uh, what you don't want is a situation um, where the birds come forward in condition, where you've got young in the nest. I close ring all of my birds. Um, so you've got a small window where you can ring your birds. Now, the color, the ring color for this year is mauve or purple. And um, you can see here, I've got my rings already here. So first job on our to-do list, audio rings. Our second job is I use this period of, of time to um, to clean the birds through. So there's a variety of different methods in doing that. There's a variety of different products available. Uh, I use um, Baycox. So um, what I do is I uh, I do it to the, uh, the, the the necessary dosage. I'll take all of the drinkers off. I'll uh, disinfect them uh, in the sink first and foremost, as we can see here. And that process takes uh, an hour, an hour and a half. I do it first thing in the morning. And what that means is, as the birds come in, they've got um, they've got no drinkers on us. And you can see here, as I'm popping the drinkers back on, the birds very quickly will take to the drinker. And that's super important you know we want that clean out to go through them so we've got a clean out um, at the first part of uh, January as I say about eight weeks through and then we'll start to build the birds up so we'll build the birds up with multivitamins and we'll also build the birds up with some egg food now in January we're giving the birds egg food once a week as we move into February that will be twice a week but our to-do list in January, it's just once a week that we're giving the birds egg food. Now, they absolutely love the egg food. I'm giving them in, in, in small quantities. Uh, I'm giving it them in finger drawers. So you can see, you know, they, they as soon as it goes on, they're absolutely devouring it. Um, and our, our, our final job on our to-do list for January is, is our first uh, mite treatment. Now, there's a, a, a full how-to video of this on, uh, on our YouTube channel. Uh, so check that out. Give it a thumbs up. Um, but also, um, what we do, uh, you remember from last year, is we, we catch the birds up. We're looking for the preen gland on the bird. And now that's just above the back of the rump. You can see it here on this close-up shot. And we just drop... Uh, a little drop of, of front line. Now we're using a, a glass pipette to do this. The pipette um, bought off Amazon, so, um, you know, easily accessible. Front line, you can get it from veterinary supplies. Um, this one is for cats and dogs. I, 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 I use a, a very small amount of it. Um, never had a problem with it, but do not overdo it. Do not overdo it because it will, uh, it can prove fatal. So just to drop, um, I'll repeat that process uh, a couple of weeks on. So that's our to-do list for January. Uh, we'll have another one next month. I mentioned at the uh, at the start of the show our our Norwich notebook uh, and and the new features that we've got here with uh, the Norwich canaries. Um, I have owned Norwich canaries in the past. Um, they're a stunning bird, and and really doing the uh, the show last year with Mac Finch, and then going to visit Keith Ferry. Uh, I, I had Norwich in the canary room last year, and I just thought, you know what? Actually, as a, as a second stud of birds, they are um, they're a challenge, but they're a thing of beauty. Um, so we've got um, we've got six hens. Um, in fact, we haven't. We've got five hens. Um, in the room, we've got a, a, a yellow hen here, a buff hen here, we've got a pair of greens here, um, we've got a white cock and a buff hen here, and a, a white hen and a buff cock here. Um, so we've got five hens on um, in the canary room this year, hopefully five hens. 
has caught out the corner of my eye in, in this cage up here, uh, a yellow just warbling a little bit, which um, hopefully it's just a warble uh, and it doesn't turn out to be a cock bird. Um, but we'll see. So we might have four hens. Who knows? Um, but the Norwich are a thing of, of real beauty. And, and my, my determination with the Norwich is very much to build a competitive line of birds. Now, I'm, uh, I'm indebted to, to Paul Gilchrist, Mac Finch. Um, I'm also indebted to Keith Ferry. Um, Keith, when I was there, very kindly gave me a, a copy of the Norwich model, uh, which I'm, uh, I'm going to get framed. And I'm going to hang in the canary room. Um, very generous of Keith, and both Keith and Paul have been um, a constant supply of knowledge for me. So um, they're new for this year. They will not be, I'm sure, without their trials and tribulations, but an absolutely, absolutely stunning, stunning bird to have. And I, I'm delighted with them. And, and the idea, really, with the Norwich, as I say, is to, to breed them, to compete with them, um, and also to utilize them with some of the native birds I've got to develop some mewling. And so, well, it's that time already. It was the Red Pole Diaries. It's now the Native Diaries. Since you were last here, I've, um, I've moved all of the... Uh, the natives around um, a, a little bit. I've, I've opened up the cages. So um, you can see in the top cage here, I was I was contemplating a, a linnet and a bullfinch hybrid. Um, what I've opted to do is run a, a really nice yellow cock Norwich um, with a bullfinch. So we've got some mewling going on um, in this top cage here with this bullfinch. Then there's a pair of bullfinches here, a pair of native bullfinches in the cage behind me. Um, I caught on camera, and, and, and hopefully you'll get the audio of this this morning, I caught the hen um, just having a little warble. And then, do you know what? It's, it's absolutely beautiful. And, do you know, I think I think one of the things, I think, you know, we often spend um, a lot of time in, in, in our rooms, and, you know, it's cleaning cages, it's... it's mucking out, it's feeding, it's general health check. Um, and don't get a real time to appreciate the birds. Um, you know, it, it, it's cold here at the moment. It's three and a half degrees in the canary room at the moment. Um, but I just sort of I just sort of stopped and looked and, and, and really enjoyed the bullfinch. So I have caught it on film. You can see it here um, just warbling away. Um, below we've got our Siberian goldfinches uh, and then in the bottom cage here we've got some red poles we've got which we'll see next time out we've got our mutation siskin cock and a normal hen and then we've got a couple of Isabel um, Isabel uh, Siberian goldfinches as well so we've currently got I think um, two additional uh, or sorry, one additional Siberian hen. Um, don't quite know what I'm going to do with that at the moment. I've got I've got three together, um, and I may. I don't know. I don't know. Don't need to make a decision yet. Um, I might need to DNA sex the uh, the young from last year just to see whether it is a, a, a hen. Uh, I, I think it is. Um, We've then, uh, we've got the two pairs of, of red poles, the, the split pied um, hen in this cage here, and the split pied cock in the, the cage above. So they're birds I bred last year. Um, and they're both with uh, visual pied birds. And what that means is that the young that they produce will both be visual and split for pied. So um, potentially we've got four pairs of red poles uh, to run with this year. Um, I say potentially, there's a couple of older birds, um, so we'll, we'll see how they go. But native finches, very, very much looking forward to see how they go. You might be wondering what's happened with the linnet cock. Well, he is still here. Um, I'm going to run him with an Irish fancy yellow hen. Um, I just... 
I don't know. I thought it might be nice. They're, they're, they're a sort of similar size and a similar shape. Um, obviously, the Linnet Mules are, are renowned for their song. What I'll have to do if I'm lucky enough to breed them is move those birds out of here. There's too many canaries in here. So any of the mules that I, I breed that I'm looking for for song, and the Linnet specifically is song, the bullfinch will be for, for shape and colour. Um, I'm going to have to move them away. So um, that's the native diaries for, for this episode. Um, you know, there'll be heartache along the way. I, I've got bullfinches for the first time um, it, as a pair um, in, in the canary room this year. Uh, just, you know, they're absolute. I'm smitten with them. I'm smitten with all the birds. People will say to me, what's your favourite bird? It's like asking you what your favourite child is. I know who my favourite child is, but that's for another time. OK, we'll, um, we'll take a little look now around the room and we'll see the, the, the changes that, that we've made with, with moving the birds around. With the fifes, one of the things I've done is I've, I've had the hens in the long flight cages. Now, these cages open up to about eight feet. Um, and, you know, the, the idea behind that over winter um, as, as part of a rest period really was A, to give them a little bit of rest, but also B, just to give them a... Um, a, a, a some length to, to fly and, uh, and get fit. Now, the challenge, as anybody will know who keeps birds, of, of keeping birds in flights, is you have to sort of, um, you, you can't target feed. So you, you feed the flight, and what you invariably have is a pecking order. Um, and what we can see here, if I, if I catch this bird up, you can see um, an excess of fat. Um, and and so almost the, the sort of the object of the bird being um, in here is defeated because they're overfeeding. So what I've done is I've moved all of the birds into the rows that they're going to breed on now. They are still in, um, these are in trebles, the fifes um, behind me here. Um, you can see I've got uh, possibly, I've got a row of dark yellow hens here. Um, and then I've got all my yellow hens down in, in these three cages. And I've got my buff hens in, in these three cages here. Um, so I've got them in, in, in threes at the moment and then I'll single these cages off round about mid-February time and that'll be the breeding cages that they run in. The five cocks have remained, with the exception of the cinema ones, have remained in single cages right the way throughout. So I can target feed them. And when I talk about target feeding, it, it's essentially you want the birds, you know, throughout the winter it's cold, you want them to have a degree of, um, of fat on to keep warm. Um, but actually coming into the breeding season, you don't want fat on the birds. You want them to be fit. Um, but you don't really want them to have fat. It, 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 it won't do them any good for the breeding season. Um, one of the birds that we, uh, we're still to look at, um, and it's going to be our bird of the week this week. It's our special winning bird. Uh, it was um, best fife and fifth best AOV at the Natives and Norwich show. It was a bird we bred last year. It's a heavily variegated green-yellow cock. Uh, next time out, we'll have a look at the green line. We'll have a look at the plans for the green line, some big plans for the green line this year. So it's time for Bird of the Week. This bird was bred out of a, uh, a father-daughter pairing. Now, regrettably, I, um, I lost the cock to this. It was a heavily variegated buff cock, lovely bird. Um, I've still got the, the mother to this bird. It, it's um, an important bird in the dark line this year. Um, I've also got the grandmother of it, so I was able to bring in a blue-ringed hen, a green-yellow hen from Gerald. So I've got everything crossed from that. I bought a couple of buff cocks in from Gerald that are bred down from that line as well. So we'll see those on a future episode. But this bird, it was best fife for me at Natives and Norwich show. Um, and it, it's got a lot of quality about it. I've got two green yellow cocks, uh, brothers. They've got um, four hens uh, between them this year. So um, I'll run this cock over all four hens in the first round. Um, and then I'll, I'll use his brother who is, you know, as good a bird, um, not um, 
potentially the same quality, but he's, he's a real quality bird as well. I'll use him in the second. So that is this week's Bird of the Week. It's a heavily variegated yellow Fife Canary Cock. One of the things um, that I really enjoyed about our on-the-road trips last year was meeting fanciers uh, across the UK and looking at the various different varieties of birds. You'll remember um, early last year we took a trip to Julian's Canary Bird Room and, and Julian has become a, a really good friend of mine um, over the last 12 months. Um, Julian has some... Uh, some stunning mosaic canaries um, and I've been able to acquire from him for this year uh, a couple of um, red black grey wings and a and a gat uh, cock um, a red agat mosaic cock uh, to go with the hens I bred last year so for this year in the colour canaries I've got um, well, the new colours I've got two pairs of agat mosaics I've got two pairs of red black grey wings and I've also got a pair of yellow mosaics now these birds are in the room for their own right so these birds are here because I like them uh, my plan is to uh, to breed them straight uh, and to take them onto the show bench and hopefully the shows will return later in 2021 and um, they are in their own right a lovely bird they will also Hopefully, should they be needed, help me with uh, rearing the Norwich. And um, the Norwich, you know, new addition in volume this year. Um, but these birds I will use um, to support that in a, a feeding capacity. But the important thing is that you have birds in your room that you like so these birds are here you know if i didn't have the norwich these birds would still be here and um, i really like the the sort of the darker um of the birds i've got a pair of yellow mosaics in um as well as a bit of interest and um, now the the beauty is uh, my 14 year old son who until recently has shown absolutely no interest in the birds has um has taken a bit of a shine to the mosaics um, and he has uh, has sort of suggested that he might to look might want to to look after them and breed them so i've, I've very happily gifted them to my son um, he's a bit camera shy he's the other side of the camera at the moment uh, so he's a bit camera shy but who knows we might get will on a future episode as well and the canary room could become a dad and lad thing um, it's unlikely but who knows i live in hope i live in hope so there are color canaries or new color canaries um, that we're going to run with for this year as i say we've got two pairs of agat mosaics we've got two pairs of red gray black wings or, uh, and we've got a, a pair of yellow mosaics to run with as well and in a flash episode one of season four of the show is coming towards its end and um, if you um have liked the show please give it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed to the channel hit subscribe there will be more videos coming out in 2021 if you are able to and you um, you've enjoyed what you've seen if you make a donation to the show you can do that through our youtube channel if you don't already follow the channel on facebook too we've got an active facebook page until next time everyone take care